Good morning, everyone, and welcome back. Today is November 21st, and today's topic and article is going to be pleasantly placed on how to talk about climate change in an emotionally intelligent way. Let's begin. So, simply look at the reaction environmentalist activist uh, Greta Thunberg receives after speaking at her most recent climate rally, or really when she does anything. And you'll see how heated things can actually get when people talk about climate change. See, the, the overwhelming wealth of scientific evidence can make this topic even more attractive. But people can find facts about climate change and find that it's true, but that confidence can be interpreted as arrogance or patronizing. So with all of that, it's, it's easy for you to sit there and think that like, hey, climate change, it's bad. I don't want to talk about the bad or some people think it's fake or some people just generally and usually don't want to talk about it at all due to the way that someone is actually talking about it and they feel targeted. But with the holidays approaching, many of us will be stuck at the table or sitting on the couch, stuffed full of food. Uh, trying to enjoy things and then someone's gonna say something about climate change or someone is going to misplace how they say it and there's different ways you can talk about this I mean you're gonna have relatives with radically different viewpoints and you know, in all honesty to each their own you know I mean so what do you do if you're concerned about rising sea levels or shrinking ice sheets and you want to have a productive conversation that doesn't de devolve into personal attacks. Like, well, stick to these few a few rules, and this is what we've got. Instead of instead of pulling out a soapbox, use current events such as extreme weather or the elections as a gentle transition into a conversation about climate change. So, like last night's topics and what Bernie Sanders said about eight to nine years. It's facts it's factual use it but gently you want to ease them into the conversation and just talk calmly about the situations and events that have taken place don't just go in hammering going nuts no facts 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 not that's not how that needs to go it needs to be gentle it needs to be a transition and first off and foremost you need to talk about current factual events as you introduce the topic, gauge their interest in talking, and they may say, hey, I'm not interested, but who knows, that person might come back to you later, and you don't want to blind somebody, which might contribute to their fears. So everyone has different views, and it's important that they don't feel as if you're trying to overwhelm them with your opinion, even if it is facts. For example, this person may not trust climate scientists, uh, the science, uh, in general they may think is inaccurate and the scientists have been bought out or climate science is driven by a certain agenda or anything of that nature but if you sit there and you talk to them about it you 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 need to address it very casual like but keep it factual uh, some uh, dismiss the climate science because it suits their own economic well-being it's better for them to not have climate policies in place oh well Sorry, but we need them. And many others deny the idea for religious reasons, believing that God is in control of the environment, not humans. Well, different topic for different folks, different strokes. So, some people who are adamant will not be swayed on the topic, and I don't recommend engaging these people in conversation, except to point out in an online forum or mobile public space that where others are going to be present and they'll benefit from it. Mostly due to the fact that you're able to engage them, not just change their minds, but to further the conversation. And mostly due to the fact that you're sharing information and not trying to be overwhelming. As long as it's backed by facts, you've got the links, you've got the descriptions, you've got the ability to place time, dates, stamps, everything. That's about the only time I would target those people. They get very aggressive. You can engage people who are doubtful, cautious, uncertain, and skeptical, but whose minds are not closed. Luckily, polls on the internet will actually show most people fall into that category. 
Have a conversation with mutual respect. You can disagree, but enter the conversation understanding the intrinsic value in which people are talking to you with. It's a dialogue, not a lecture. Tell them what they don't know. You may find that you agree on certain points. And if, you met, if you're met with resistance, inquisitively ask why they think the way they do. And you can say, tell me what you think about the environment. Some people will admittedly de- uh, who are admittedly deniers or skeptics still care about the environment. If you go into the conversation assuming they don't care about science or the environment, you put yourself at a disadvantage and the conversation at a rocky start. Don't do that. Go in open-minded and, and treat the, the conversation with the same respect that you would want back. You're not likely to have conversations with pure strangers about climate change, so you probably already know a lot about the person that you're engaging with, so it makes it more comfortable and easier to, to, to even have the conversation with. But that's all the time we have for today, guys. Please remember, if you will, that you can follow us on Twitter, Facebook, Reddit, Anchor, Instagram, LinkedIn, TikTok, and Snapchat, as well as here on YouTube. So as always, remember, we are here. Thank you very much, and I hope everybody has a wonderful day.